Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white devotion deck called Devotion to Wide. So I started out building a bunch of mono white devotion decks that were trying to curve one drop, two drop into a Heliod Sun Crowned and then attack with a Heliod on turn four. But those decks were kind of inconsistent because we didn't always draw Heliot, and without Heliot the deck felt a little bit underpowered. Of course Heliot the big payoff for playing a bunch of devotion cards as a 3 mana 5-5 five five indestructible legendary enchantment creature god that says as long as your devotion to white is less than 5 Heliot isn't a creature, so we need 5 white symbols in our permanence before we can attack with Heliod and then whenever we gain life put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control and for one on a white another target creature gains a lifelink until end of turn so that's a way to get those counters going as well so Heliod's a very powerful card if we can start attacking with it right away but of course if we don't draw the Heliod we still need to have a functional deck so that's where I started searching for other potential payoffs for white devotion and of course stumbled upon a reverend hoplite 5 mana for a 1-2 human soldier that when it enters the battlefield creates a number of 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens equal to your devotion to white so we can make a whole bunch of tokens since our deck is very good at making devotion but then of course we also need a bit of a payoff for making all those tokens since we don't have cards in standard anymore like banalish marshal which would have fit perfectly into this deck so we don't have those powerful anthem effects anymore that play well with devotion and that's where i stumbled upon angelic exaltation for mana for an enchantment saying whenever a creature you control attacks alone it gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of creatures you control so if we can combine angelic exaltation with a whole bunch of tokens from reverend hoplite we can potentially attack with a single massive creature and if that single creature happens to be a flying creature like we have a bunch of at uh, one and two mana then we can potentially just kill the opponent in one or two attacks without the opponent being able to block so that's kind of the game plan of the deck we've got this whole devotion uh, package we've got a bit of life gain synergy and then we've got to go wide wombo combo with exaltation and reverend hoplite so let's take a look at the entire list at one mana we've got a bunch of cheap one mana flyers two copies of fairy guide mother as a one one flyer that can potentially also use the adventure later in the game and then four copies of healer's hawk which of course is the preferred one drop as it has life links that synergizes very well with heliot and also great with angelic exaltation if we can gain a massive amount of life when attacking with a hawk then at two mana we've got the full playset of daxas blessed by the sun despite being a legendary creature it also counts as an enchantment for those enchantment synergies which we'll get to in a second and Daxo's toughness is equal to our devotion to white which is at least two and then whenever another creature we control enters the battlefield or dies we gain one life so having Daxos alongside Heliot can potentially put a lot of plus one plus one counters on our creatures. Just imagine having a Daxos and Heliot in play and then playing a Reverend Hoplite, making a ton of tokens, gaining a ton of life. And for each one of those life gain triggers we get to put a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures. So the synergy here is very good. Then we also have two copies of Atomic, Distinguished Advocist, which is a two mana 2-3 two, flyer, also legendary, so we're only playing two copies. But the important part here is that it's two devotion as well as being a flying creature to take advantage of the angelic exaltation to maybe help us close out the game. Then it also has some other text, lands on the battlefield and land cards in graveyards can be the targets of spells or abilities your opponents control and your opponents can play land cards from graveyards. So it does have some uh, potential upside there as well. Disrupting the opponent can be very effective against Nissa who shakes the world as the opponent won't be able to target their lands with the plus one ability. And then we also have the full playset of Charming Prince which was a addition two mana for a 2-2 human noble and when the charming prince enters battlefield we can choose one between scry 2 so it can help us find the missing combo pieces or just hit our land drops we can also gain three life which of course synergizes with heliot and we can also exile another target creature we own return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step so if we draw charming prince in a late game and have a reverend hoplite in play we could just flicker the hoplite and then just make a whole bunch of tokens once again so the synergy there is also very strong and if we do happen to draw multiple copies of charming prince we can potentially uh, use one charming prince to exile the other charming prince and then they will kind of alternate exiling each other which can provide 
a lot of enter the battlefield triggers for Daxos, so there's also a small uh, side note there. Then at 3 mana we've got 4 copies of Heliot Sun Crowned, despite being legendary it's just so powerful that we want to maximize our chances of drawing it. And then we also have the full playset of Banishing Light as our main interaction, as an enchantment that when it enters the battlefield can exile target to non-land permanents and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. And then at 4 mana, another very important part in the deck here is Arcanist Owl, a 4 mana 3-3 flyer that counts for 4 devotion, so it can potentially enable Heliod all by itself, so even if the opponent wraths our board for example and we have Heliod in play, we can just play Arcanist Owl and attack with our Heliod right away, and when the Owl enters the battlefield we can look at the top 4 cards of our library to find an artifact or enchantment, so it can help us find Daxos, Heliod, Banishing Light as well as Angelic Exaltation, so it does have a lot of targets and of course can also find additional copies of itself as it does count as an artifact. So Arcanus Owl is great in this deck. And then of course we've got our full place of Angelic Exaltation, which is still good in multiples since the effect stacks. So if we have two copies of Angelic Exaltation, the creature will get twice plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures we control. And then finally we've got four copies of Reverend Hoplite, which of course plays very well with Angelic Exaltation, and every now and then just making five or six tokens and going wide can also get the opponent killed just as easily, especially with the Daxos plus Heliot combo. And then our mana base, four Castle Ardenvale to make more tokens in the late game, and 20 basic planes. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, I don't mind keeping this. We're missing a 2 mana play, but starting with Hawk is nice, and then we've got Owl to hopefully find something juicy. Nah, we've got double Banishing Lights. As a bit of interaction, facing Steam Vents, not sure what we're up against. Some sort of uh, spell-heavy deck. Yeah, I probably should get rid of this Electromancer. If they're a spell-heavy deck, they're not going to have a ton of targets for Banishing Lights, necessarily. And it's pretty mana efficient to do so. Nah, I guess we can also exile the Royal Science here. Or I could play Owl. I guess if I'm keeping the Science in play for one turn, it's not the end of the world. And this turn we get to go Owl, and then next turn maybe Banishing Light plus Tomic is pretty efficient. Find another Owl, and I guess I might as well go face, if the plan is uh, to Banishing Light to Science. So we're just waiting for one of our Devotion payoffs here. What is my Heliods or Hoplite would be great. And Discovery, they might be playing Arclight Phoenix as well. Opponent passes, and there's Hoplite, but I don't have to play it quite yet. So how about... First see if this Banishing Light resolves. We'll attack, and then play Tomic. Brazen Borrower to bounce Owl, alright. It's gonna reduce our devotion a little bit. But our opponent's not applying any pressure, so we might have time to play Owl before Hoplite. Lava Coil on Tomic. Right, Exaltation's good with Hoplite. But I'm gonna take my time and uh, play Owl first. Do I want to trade Hawk for Brazen Borrower? I guess that's fine. And then all these cards are pretty good. Heliot could pair well with the Hawk, and I guess my opponent doesn't have a great way to deal with it. So I guess we'll diversify a little bit. Another Discovery. So 
I could just play Hoplite here if the Owl survives. Never mind. I mean, my opponent seems pretty soft to a bunch of tokens since they've got a bunch of spot removal. But I think I want to get a bit more devotion going first. And Daxos is excellent here. So next turn I can maybe go Daxos into Heliod. Heliod will be a creature, so it will trigger Daxos. And then we'll have plenty of devotion for the Hoplite. Although, it kind of looks like this game might end before we assemble the Wombo Combo. But then Hoplite with Heliod and Daxus both in place also great. I'll take it. Opponent passes. So yeah, this seems like a Daxus plus Heliod turn. And I guess I'll put the counter on the Owl, so that it can potentially get past the Brazen Borer. They might have another one, just a shock on the Hawk, that's fine. Triggers Daxos, which can place another counter somewhere. And it's gonna be another Brazen Borer, alright. So... They're trying to keep us off Devotion, but uh, they're running out of cards and they're not really presenting much of a threat themselves. So sooner or later we're gonna be able to make a giant army. Lava Coil not good enough to deal with Daxos, but an Ox of Agonos, alright. That's a nice new addition for the deck. Draws three cards when entering the battlefields, since they didn't have anything to discard. But let's see here. Now it's probably good enough to play Hoplites. And then we'll start putting some counters everywhere and my opponent explodes. So yeah, we were going to be able to play seven counters on our creatures. Basically force them to chum block with Ox and then next turn we would have had plenty uh, to kill them with. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a functional hand, if maybe an unexciting hand, as we're missing Daxos, Heliod, any of the Devotion payoffs, really. But uh, I'll try it. Can maybe scry two with a Prince to look for those better cards, and then uh, we've got Banishing Light for some interaction. Facing potentially Mono Black Devotion here. Fenlurker could either get rid of a land or a Charming Prince. I guess I'll get rid of a Charming Prince here. That way I can scry too and maybe keep something like Arcanus Owl or Hoplite on top. The Hawk's a little bit late, but I think I'll still play the Charming Prince here. And then... I guess if we keep Tomic we can go Hawk plus Tomic in the same turn. So that's okay. In case we don't need to Banishing Light anything. If they play something like Ayara, then I'll probably exile it. Although they could also have the Demon at 4 mana, which is definitely worth exiling as well. The problem here is if they play the Demon next turn, they can sack the Fenlurker to Ayara and then make another Fenlurker to make me exile the cards, which is kind of painful. But then again, we also need to get rid of the demon eventually, so... If they have the demon, we're in trouble. So I'm just gonna get rid of Ayara, decrease their devotion a little bit. And we'll still keep Prince on defense. Alright, it's gonna be a Midnight Reaper. And we'll take two. Alright, not a bad turn for Heliod. Although, let's see here, my devotion's two at the moment. So if I play Heliot plus Hawk and next turn play Exaltation, I should have enough Devotion if nothing dies, so yeah, I guess we'll do that. The 
the other option was just to play Tomic, and then maybe next turn play Exaltation. But then we would uh, maybe lose out on some plus one plus one counters with Heliod. It's gonna be a Witch's Oven, so they are playing the Cauldron Familiar package as well. And then I guess we'll take five. The Owl's pretty good too here, so we've got a ton of options. Could also just play Tomic and then activate Helia to give something a lifelink, but Helia can give himself lifelink. Could also just play Exaltation and then just attack with Helia, but I kind of want to gain the life from the Hawk. So how about Exaltation, just attack with Hawk, and then hopefully they can kill one of my creatures so we can play defense with Helia. And then I'll put a counter on the Charming Prince here. It's gonna be Grey Merchants. Five, six, seven, eight. So we're down to three. But we're not dead on board. Fairy Guide Mother. So we just want to play more creatures so the Hawk gains more life, basically. So I think we just uh, play Tomic and Guide Mother attack. Could also Adventure, I guess, which technically gets in one more damage, so gains me one more life, but then we have one fewer blocker in play. If they do have another Grey Merchant, we're probably still dead. If they can find a Demon... And then sacrifice Grey Merchant to the Oven or Ayara, we're also still dead. And then where do we put the counter? Probably put it on the Hawk now. So we can gain more life next turn if, if we're still alive. Alright, there's a Shepherd, so... Yeah, we're very dead here. They can sacrifice the Grey Merchant to Ayara. And then uh, they'll get another token from the Shepherd to kill us. Alright. So, we almost managed to kind of turn a corner here. Needed maybe one more turn to pad our life total to get out of Grey Merchant range. And uh, we would have been okay. So I guess we were missing like a hoplite to really make some tokens to go with the exaltation here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand seems okay. Can go Daxus first and then maybe Prince or depending on our land's situation, Prince first. But now I think I'll run out Daxus. I guess Butcher's a 2-2, so the Daxos would still just trade. So maybe I'm better off playing the Prince. And then... I guess I could Scry, since I don't have a 1 or 3 mana play to have a more efficient turn next turn. And Banishing Light could be good, especially if this uh, Butcher gets out of hand, so we'll keep it. And then I could keep land afterwards so that we get to go double 2-drop on 4, hoplite on 5. Seems okay. Rampage, so Prince down. So yeah, Banishing Light seems pretty good here. I will still need to find something to go over the top of my opponent. Since, unfortunately, I'll have to play the Prince next turn instead of being able to keep it to make more tokens. And especially Mayhem Devil can definitely deal with a bunch of 1-1s. One so we'll go Daxos. And then we can scry with the Prince. Looking for something uh, powerful here. More Banishing Lights. I mean, I guess I'll keep one. Probably don't want both. And then if they somehow do deal with Daxos, I could just go Daxos Banishing Lights. 
Otherwise, we'll just play Hoplite and gain a bunch of life. Ooh, Trenchfer's Blessing, draw three. And they probably have some ways of uh, sacrificing it. Which is often also a good target for the Banishing Lights. But they don't have a Cauldron's Familiar yet, so I don't know if we quite want to get rid of the Oven. So I think this turn will just Hoplite and then... We'll wait and see. So this would be a good time to draw Angelic Exaltation or Arcanus Owl into Angelic Exaltation. Heliod would be okay. Second Devil, alright. And Croxa, which will get rid of Duxos. And they can even sacrifice Croxa to the Witch's Oven with a trigger on the stack to get a bit of value. Takes out the Hoplite, so we can't draw Charming Prince and flicker it. Makes two food. And not the draw we were hoping for. But I guess now we can get rid of a Devil. And I'll empty my hand in case of another Croxa here. Don't have a great attack. If I attack with everyone, what happens? They eat the Prince, they take 7. I mean, maybe it's worth it. They do have this Blessing in play. That also... Cost them a bunch of life. And I don't want to give them infinite time. Anax puts them to seven. And a Midnight Reaper puts them to six. Okay. Still not the draws we were hoping for. So now if I attack with everyone, what happens? They would only take 3 damage. Can make another token with Castle. And next turn they can start gaining a bit of life with all the food. So they're not necessarily dead. But I think I still go for it. And then we'll probably make the token before... Daxos dies if they do decide to double block Daxos. Otherwise, I guess we can wait. They will sag the Reaper in an attempt to take out Daxos. We'll make a token of response. So their opponents are two life, but they do have three food tokens, so... We'll see. Back up to five. And hits us for four. Gutter Bones go down to 4. Yeah, I'm not sure how they intend to get rid of their Treacherous Blessing. Now also decent pickup. And yeah, I'll take a Heliod. Alright, so now we've got a 5-5 Indestructible in play. Don't think it's worth it to send in the tokens. So if Owl survives, we're in great shape. Although it doesn't take much for them to kill it with uh, Mayhem Devil. Another Midnight Reaper. 
They have three cards in graveyards, so they still can't quite escape Croxa. They're gonna go digging with Reaper. And a Temple of Malice, a nice addition for Black Red. I guess we'll attack with both. They can block with these uh, Seder tokens. So they might have to sacrifice something real. And we'll give the Owl lifelink as well. I don't think I want to put the counter on a 1-1 one -one token since they can kill it with the Foo token and Devil. So I'll just put the counter on the Owl. Keep playing out my lands in case of another Croxa. Sir points back up to seven. Dreadhorde Butcher, sure. I guess I'll make a token and force them to kill it with the uh, Mayhem Devil here. Gutter Bones returns. More Owls, that's good. Exaltation could be very strong here, and yeah, there it is. So I could just attack with Owl, which will hit for 7 here. They're not dead since they can sack the food, but that does potentially limit what they can do with the Blessing in play. If I hit with both, then what happens? I guess I force them to chump with one of their creatures. But keeping Heliod on defense could also be a good thing. We'll try this. Of course, next turn, when I can give the Owl lifelink with Heliod, it gets much better. Another oven. And they're gonna go after one of the owls. Yeah, the Treacherous Blessing hasn't seemed great in their deck. It is very good in like Doom Foretold decks and other decks that can uh, fully leverage it by easily sacrificing it, but has seemed a bit lackluster so far. So they're one damage short of killing the second owl on board. So, I mean, I could just take four. Maybe they're just desperate and they're hoping to draw into another way of finishing off the Owl. Could just block the Reaper. I mean, blocking Reaper is also not bad here. Let's see if they drew an answer for the Owl. Otherwise, they are dead on board to it, since Owl can attack for five. And they're out of food tokens, finally. We're gonna escape Croxa. And yeah, that should do it. Opponent explodes, sweet. So pretty lengthy game here against Rakdos Sacrifice. 
All right, we're on the play, and yeah, I mean, I guess we'll keep. Again, not the most exciting hand since we're missing all the devotion payoffs. But uh, we've got some lands and some spells. And hopefully the Scry 2 can find us some better cards. So Heliot here would be great. Facing blue-white control, maybe. Just gonna hit for two and play Tomic. And then we can maybe keep the Prince to flicker the Arcana Isle. Which can then uh, maybe find us some more good cards. Tomic does get quenched. Get in for two. Don't really want to play four drop into absorb, but I can double spell effectively. Could also play angelic exaltation, but I guess I will just play a charming prince here. Still something to add a bit of pressure to the board, but if this one gets countered, it's not as bad. And then I guess I could exile my other charming prince. This way we play around the four mana sweeper a little bit better. And we'll do this once again, and then on the opponent's end step, we can uh, maybe scry to to improve our draw step. All right, let's see what we can find here. Daxos and Guide Mother. Not really excited about any of these. I think we bought them both. All right, that's better. So I guess we'll play Heliots, which they probably counter. But at least we can pay for Quench, if that's their counter spell. It's going to be a sabotage, and then we'll hit for four, and then hopefully if the owl resolves, we can maybe find another Heliot that way. But I don't really want to play the owl into a Shatter the Sky. It's going to be a Teferi, and do they plus or do they minus? They could also bounce their own Omen of the Sea. And that's what they'll do. I'm going for the card draw option. So yeah, this turn, while we probably can resolve the Owl, it does play right into a sweeper from my opponent, which they're likely to have. So I guess I want to play a permanent that doesn't get uh, swept away. Although I guess I can attack first here, take out the fairy, hit him for two. Since the Exaltation doesn't add much, and maybe that uh, changes my opponent's decision. But of course, if they play a Dream Trawler next turn, that's also pretty bad for us. So, we're in a bit of trouble here. This seems like a tough matchup. Unless we can get an early Helia to stick. They will quench Exaltation, fair enough. It's going to be Healer's Hawk. It's a little bit unexpected. So it's possible that they're not a sweeper-heavy control deck and instead they're kind of this Flash Flyer deck, yeah? With a new two-mana aura. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Maybe a Rally of Wings. All right, fair enough. Well, at least now we know not to fear sweeper effects as much. So we can finally run the owl out there. If 
find... I mean, both of these are great. Probably still Heliods. And then uh, we can start gaining some life. So this must be another Rally of Wings. Don't really want to lose any of my creatures, otherwise we don't have enough devotion for Heliod, so I guess we'll take it. Alright, I mean, the way this game started out, they look like a blue-white control deck, but they're just a blue-white flyer deck. Alright, time for Heliots, can pay for Quench, and then we can use the ability as well. They could still have a Rally of Wings, of course, which will untap their creatures. I guess we could just hit with Tomic, and then... I'm fine if that dies, because then we'll still have an active Heliods. And then I can start putting counters on Owl, that way it survives a Rally of Wings on a one-powered creature. Sounds alright. Alright, so we've got a 4-4 Owl on defense. And uh, an active Heliod. This would be a great time to draw Hoplite as well. Just making a bunch of tokens. It's gonna be another Teferi. Well, at least if they bounce the Owl, I can get the ETB effect again. Alright, yeah, let's play our Owl. And both of those are great. Don't have that many tokens for the Exaltation here, necessarily. So it might be Banishing Light, although there's no one target I necessarily want to get rid of. But it could be good if they draw, like, an Empyrean Eagle, which I assume they have. So, I'll take a Banishing Light. And then I think we'll make the same play as last time. But this time we can also attack with Heliods. It's going to be a Brazen Borrower to Bounce Owl once again. Eh, interesting that they chose to wait and take five. So, I'm guessing they have still a Rally of Wings in hand, and the other one's an Imperial Eagle, right? So that one's a good target for the Banishing Light. And we shouldn't be dead here. Exaltation. Don't quite need it now. So I'll start out with the Banishing Light since I do definitely want to get rid of the Eagle. And if they do have another Quench, I want to make sure this resolves. And then we'll replay the Owl. Another Banishing Light is great. And this time I won't be able to have a 4-4 Owl on defense. So it might be correct to leave Tomic back since they're going to flash and borrow maybe and then I don't want to be that to a uh, Rally of Wings. Okay, 
opponent sends everyone. So yeah, this definitely smells like a rally. So how do we block? Opponent at 5. How much damage is this total? If I don't block, then we're taking 6 plus 8 is 14, so I definitely have to block at least one creature. I guess I'll put Owl in front of Sailor. That way it still trades if they rally, and we keep Tomic to have enough devotion to maybe keep uh, Heliod online. Could also get rid of the Hawk, since we don't want to have the opponent gaining a bunch of life. Alright, so there's a rally. So we take 11. And more Banishing Lights. I think we just double Banishing Light here and then keep up 2 mana to give Tomic lifelink and keep Tomic on defense. Seems the safest. If I attack with Tomic and gain 2, then if my opponent goes like Spectral Sailor into Empyrean Eagle or Spectral Sailor into a um, Rally of Wings, we could die. So it's probably safer to keep Tomic back, even though we do miss out on a bit of damage and potentially a plus 1 counter as well. Uh, and they did have Sailor end of turn. So I guess we're dead to a Brazen Boar, we're bouncing Tomic now. Opponent's gonna go digging. We're not dead to Eagle, we're not dead to Rally. Alright, looks like they have the Rally. So we will still need to top deck something here, since my opponent has two chum blockers back. And we're at one. Daxos. Does Daxos do it? I guess I can Daxos and then make a token with Castle Ardenvale to gain one. They are forced to chump. But if they have another pump effect for that, I should probably make a token now. Just because I don't want them to find Brazen Borrower to bounce Daxos in response and kill me. And then where do we put the plus one counter? Probably doesn't matter all that much. I guess uh, Daxos is fine. Alright, so we're two, now we're dead to Eagle and another Rally, or another Sailor. Alright, that's too bad. Very close game. If we found Daxos a little bit sooner, we could have maybe survived. Never really got the time to play Exaltation, never drew a Hoplite to synergize with it. But uh, if we had a Healer's Hawk, then Exaltation would have been fine. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's pretty decent if we can hit our land drops. And especially if we find a hoplite to go with our exaltation. Plenty of devotion with the owl. Facing a Temple of Deceit, so maybe an Ashok control deck. Ooh, Devourer of Memory. One of the new cards. Alright. Pretty happy to scry here with the Charming Prince to make sure we find our lands. I mean, I guess Heliod's pretty good too here. Definitely a close decision. I think I'm gonna bottom both. 
because with double owl in play we can potentially find more heliots and missing land drops is pretty bad here. And if I play Heliot and they end up killing enough creatures to turn off Devotion, then Heliot doesn't do a whole lot. Drowned Secrets, alright, so they're gonna try and mill to maybe enable the Devourer. Back up Daxos. And yeah, I'll send everyone. I'm okay with the trade. But this Devourer could potentially hit for a lot of damage. They're also playing Arclight Phoenix, I see. It's a dedicated self-mill deck. Do they have two more spells to get back Phoenix? Doesn't look like it. Alright, so five mana. Probably just play another Owl. But I guess I can attack first. We're also getting to the point where attacking with a single flying creature with exaltation is lethal. Owl doesn't die to Ritual of Soot, so I'm okay overextending a bit here since the sweeper they're likely to have shouldn't uh, kill it. Find a Heliot, so we ended up finding Heliot anyway. No, I'm not sure how they come back from this, but maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe Enter God Eternals can save them. Maximize altitude. Alright, looks like they found a couple more... Arclight Phoenix, they've got three now, so I guess, yeah. That uh, will definitely keep them alive if they can get them all back. Alright. They're doing it. They also found a Creeping Chill somewhere. With the cards they milled to gain uh, three and deal three. So now... Don't really want to trade my Owls for Phoenix when they can potentially get them back. So now we're kind of on the uh, Exaltation plan. Although it's going to take a while to grind through all these copies of Arclight Phoenix. And they're actually threatening close to lethal here. Get back Triple Phoenix, that's 9, plus 7. Yeah. They could put us to 1 life. But instead they're going to be forced to play defense with Phoenix. I guess I can play Heliod's, give Daxo's lifelink attack with it, put a counter on Arcanus Owl so it can block Phoenix, and then next turn Angelic Exaltation should be quite good, especially if we can have land 6 to give lifelink with Heliod's. Sounds okay. Just want to leave as many creatures on defense as possible. Get to gain three, and then still have a beefy owl on defense. And now we'll maybe get to see Angelic Exaltation in action too. Finds another Creeping Chill. Yeah, they could definitely kill me here with this Devourer. I was a little bit skeptical when they were so protective of it, but uh, definitely dealt a ton of damage. Of course, finding three copies of Arclight Phoenix in the top 20 cards is not going to happen every game, but uh, pretty impressive when you do manage to pull it off. So five powered Devourer of Memory. Make that six. Attack with all. This is unblockable. Think I will trade since uh, otherwise we could randomly die to another creeping chill. 
Should still have plenty of devotion. And gain a bit of extra life here too. Where do we put it? Probably... Daxos. And yeah, my opponent concedes since they're dead on the way back. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems pretty solid. Just need to find our Hoplite or a Heliod to really uh, go off here. Opponent reveals a Sphinx of Foresight. So presumably a Just Sky Fires of Invention deck. Those decks might have picked up Igelic Tutor from the new set. Bottoms all three, so did not find what they were looking for. Deafening Clarion's gonna be pretty bad for us if they have it. It's no easy way to really play around it here. And of course, Daxus will still die once we lose the devotion from the other creatures. The fairy we can manage. And there's Heliot, pretty good too. So yeah, I don't mind playing Heliot now. Protects us a bit more from a potential uh, Deafening Clarion. Still get to take out Teferi, and next turn, if we add any Devotion, we can attack with Heliot, so if they play their Fires of Invention, we can Banishing Light it and still hit them. Just another Temple of Triumph. So, maybe they only had tap lands, or they're just gonna cast a Clarion here anyway. Eh, nothing. Well, I do want to enable Devotion, so we could just play Angelic Exaltation instead. Also have to watch out for the new 4-mana Sweeper dealing 4 damage to everything. That's definitely a card they could uh, adopt as well in the Jeskai decks. And then probably still attack with everyone. Same amount of damage as if we attacked with just Heliot. But if they were holding back interaction, at least we still deal a bit of damage. Sorry, it's gonna be Teferi. But now they're just dead if we play Ducks as an attack with Tomic. Could also go Daxos into Heliots. Put a counter on Tomic. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, we didn't draw the hoplite here, but you could see how it would be quite good with both uh, Daxos and Heliots, getting a ton of life, adding a ton of counters, and then if we do need to switch to the plan where we attack with a single creature, Exaltation's quite good too. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.